we usually don't think of the universe as a mind. And because of this, we tend to artificially lower our expectations of what the universe is capable of. We don't think of the universe, for example, as being able to make choices. We think of choices as being something that higher order biological beings like humans can do within the universe. But the universe itself can't make a choice. That's crazy. That's some sort of spiritualism. Leo, you're anthropomorphizing the universe. This is the sort of the anthrop anthropomorphic fallacy that many religious people make is they tend to think of, you know, uh, inanimate objects as having human qualities. No, you got it backwards. Human qualities are aspects of the larger universe. Where did the human qualities come from? They came from the universe. What I want you to just become conscious of right now is that you sitting there right now being conscious of the things that I'm saying, you sitting there hearing my words, seeing colors around you in the room that you're sitting in, making sense of the things that I'm saying, these ideas that are flashing through your mind, various images and feelings and so forth. That's the universe. You are the universe. You are not a human inside the universe doing human stuff that the universe is not capable of doing. You are the universe imagining being a human and constructing humanness by holding that and all of its constituent components and elements in a cohesive manner such that you could be human, what we call human. You could just as easily imagine yourself being a kangaroo and you would become a kangaroo or an alien and you would become an alien or a robot and you would become a robot or a coffee table and you would become a coffee table or a basketball and you would become a basketball or a video game and you would become a video game. What it means to be human is that the universe is limiting all of the things that it could possibly imagine itself being to that stuff that you experience as what we conventionally call being human. Pain and love and fear and sadness and frustration and difficulty and, you know, pleasure and, and all the stuff that's associated with being human. See, if you didn't experience any of that, you could become a coffee table, for example. If you were a coffee table, just try to maybe imagine what it's like to be a coffee table. If you were the universe being a coffee table, then you wouldn't have these conventional human emotions. You wouldn't have pain and pleasure. You wouldn't get angry or sad. You wouldn't have dreams and goals. You wouldn't love other things. You wouldn't think, you wouldn't do philosophy. You wouldn't watch YouTube videos. You would just sit there and be a coffee table. It's a much simpler, <laughs> simpler existence. A lot less problems. <laughs> you wouldn't fear death. You wouldn't even think about how you were born or where you came from. You would just be a coffee table, just a dumb coffee table. So I want you to expand your possibility space and give the universe some more credit. See, you've been, you've been very arrogant your whole life. Us humans, we're very arrogant creatures. We like to think of ourselves as the center of the universe, as somehow superior to the universe, as like um, the most advanced things in the universe. This is a deep delusion because we take credit for those aspects of the universe that are actually generating us as humans. We take credit 
for consciousness. We take ownership of awareness. We take ownership of perception and colors and feelings and emotions. And we say, this is all our stuff. And when we think and we do rationality and, and logic and intelligence, when we do mathematics and science, we say, that's us. We're doing it. The universe isn't doing science. Humans invented science. Humans are doing science. Humans are smart. The universe is stupid. Humans can make choices. The universe can't. Humans can have feelings. The universe can't. Humans can have consciousness. The universe can't. How fucking arrogant is that? Recognize who owns you. The universe owns you. You don't own the universe. The universe created you. That means the universe is smarter than you. This is the core delusion of science and materialism and logic and rationality and atheism is that people who subscribe to this worldview fundamentally do not want to admit that the universe could be more intelligent than them. They've misappropriated. Their ego has misappropriated and usurped the intelligence of the universe and confused it in its arrogance for human intelligence. All human intelligence is a tiny figment, fragment of universal intelligence. Anything a human can do, the universe can do better because a human is a part of the universe. How do you know that what I'm telling you is true? You don't believe me. This is not a philosophy. This is not an ideology. This is not something you speculate about like, oh yeah, maybe the universe is intelligent. No, 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 no. What I want you to do is actually to recognize that you are the universe. When you connect the dots and you realize, wait a minute, he's right. I am the universe. This is the universe. If I can feel pain, that means the universe is literally feeling pain right now. If I can get angry, that means the universe is getting angry. Any quality that I have, the universe has. If I'm horny, the universe is horny. See, this is not how materialism tells us to think about reality. Materialism creates a separation between the universe and us humans. It puts us humans into, into this little bubble of sensations and feelings and emotions and, and colors and sounds and so forth, locks us in this little bubble and says, that little bubble, that's all bullshit. And then there's objective reality over here, the universe, and all of the intelligent conscious stuff is happening in this bubble. Let's forget about that. We don't know how to deal with that stuff. And let's just worry about the objective hard stuff, the, the matter of the universe, the energy and the matter, the scientific stuff. And that stuff, it has no intelligence, it has no feeling, it has no capacity for consciousness, it's just completely dumb substance. This is madness, this is literally insanity, this worldview. You are denying the universe its intelligence, its feeling, its sentience, its very spirit. You are literally robbing the universe of its spirit. Thinking that you're being objective. And of course, the irony is that it's the universe that is doing that. It's not you who's creating this materialist delusion. The universe is. The universe is imagining itself being a materialist, a rationalist, an atheist, a reductionist, a scientist. The universe is imagining that it is not imagining. The universe is imagining that it's not intelligent. The universe is imagining that it's not conscious while holding that unconsciousness within its consciousness.
It's a trick. And the reason it's a trick is because that's the nature of consciousness. It's, it's mental. And because it's mental, it can be tricky. It can play tricks on itself. It's very squirrely. <laughs> Consciousness in the universe has this squirrely uh, aspect or property to it. It doesn't have to be. It can be straightforward. Like a coffee table is straightforward. But us as humans, we're very, very squirrely. We get lost in our own fantasies and uh, because we have, you know, we have these big minds. That's one, that's one of the, that's one of the trade-offs with having a big mind is that there's a lot of rope there to hang yourself with a table coffee table can't dilute itself into thinking that it's something other than what it is a human can <laughs>